Hi, welcome to Marker Board Videos. Today's video is about atomic structure. We're going to limit our discussion to the three main parts, the uh, protons, neutrons, and electrons. So let's start with the three parts of an atom, as I just said, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Proton is a positively charged particle, which is why it has this little plus. Neutron, neutral. It's got a little zero to show that it's neutral. And electrons are E with a little minus sign because it's a negatively charged particle. Where do they reside? Well, it depends on what particle you're talking about. Both the protons and the neutrons reside in the nucleus of an atom. So in the center section of an atom, that's where protons and neutrons reside. Electrons are around the outside of the nucleus. We'll get into exactly where they are later, but for right now you need to know that protons and neutrons are on the inside, in the nucleus, and the electrons are around the nucleus. So if we want to have a chart that kind of puts everything together, you have the proton, the symbol is P with a little plus sign, it's a superscript P. It has a mass of one. One what? Well, let's call it one atomic mass unit. We'll get into, again, we'll get into details of that later, but just as long as you know that it has a mass of one atomic mass unit and a positive charge. A neutron is just as, just as massive, it has a mass of one, it has no charge at all, so it's got the little n zero. An electron, I forgot to write that here, that should have an E minus. It's very, very small. It takes about 2,000 electrons in order to equal the mass of one neutron or one proton. Very tiny in terms of mass, but it has a negative charge, and its negative charge is just as big as the proton's positive charge. Okay? So that gives you an overview of the charge, the mass, and the symbol for the, um, for the particle. So, why is this important? Well, electrons are what do the bonding, but protons are what tell you something is. If you get something and you go, I have no idea what is this, you could say, I don't know, let's count the protons. Then look at the periodic table and find out. Protons tell us which element something is. If you want to know what something is, look at the number of protons. It's called the atomic number, sometimes abbreviated AN, and that tells you the number of protons. On a periodic table, you'll often see it written like this with two numbers. The uh, atomic number is always the whole number, it's never a decimal, and it's never the larger number. It's never the larger number, it's always a whole number. So that's an easy way to tell the atomic number from the other number that's there. And what is the other number that's there? It's the atomic mass. Sometimes we call that the AM, and it tells us the average mass of an atom. Now the reason it's a decimal is because atoms can have different number of neutrons. The chlorine atoms can have different number of neutrons. They don't all have the same number of neutrons. Those are called isotopes, and we'll talk about that again later. But for right now, I want you to know that atomic mass tells us the average mass of an atom. Again, atoms of the same element can have different number of neutrons, so the masses can be different. When we use atomic mass in a calculation to determine protons, neutrons, and electrons, we're going to round to the nearest whole number. When we use it in stoichiometry, we do not. But when we use it in calculations, protons, neutrons, electrons, for our, for our purposes, we're going to round to the nearest whole number. So here's the math of the chemistry. Protons, the number of protons plus the number of neutrons equal the atomic mass, which kind of makes sense because when you look at this, one plus one, right? So you add those two together, and that's going to give you the atomic mass. In the case of chlorine, you have an atomic number of 17 and an atomic mass of 35,5. The whole number is the number of protons, so you know that there are 17 protons. This we're going to round to 36. 36 minus 17. 36 minus 17 is going to tell us there's 19 neutrons. So what about electrons? Well, electrons and protons are actually the easiest ones to calculate because however many protons you have, that's how many electrons you have in an electrically neutral atom, okay? When we talk about bonding, we add and uh, we give and take electrons and then all bets are off. But in an electrically neutral atom, however many electrons you have, that's how many protons you have. So let's do some examples. Lithium. Lithium has an atomic number of three and an atomic mass of seven, okay? Which that three tells me there's three protons and three electrons. So I can fill that in right away. How many neutrons do I have? 
7 minus 3 is 4, so I have 4 neutrons. Let's look at oxygen. Oxygen has an atomic number of 8, an atomic mass of 16. That tells you right away you have 8 protons and 8 electrons. Every time. Now the atomic, um, the number of neutrons, you have to take the mass, which is 16, minus the number, which is 8. 16 minus 8 is 8. So in this case, they're all the same, but that doesn't always happen. Let's use silver, Ag, has an atomic number of 47. That tells you there's 47 protons and 47 electrons. Its atomic mass is 108. So 108 minus 47 is 61. There are 61 neutrons. You can actually determine what element you have if you know how many neutrons, I'm sorry, if you know how many protons, or if you know how many electrons. Because you simply look at this eight, go to your periodic table, say what has an atomic number of eight? Oh, it's oxygen. So you can go this direction, this direction, or any way in between.